If you're in slow tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy and a blank. Welcome back to Drawing a Blank. This week's episode was actually commissioned by one of my patrons, Wolf Whistle. Special thanks to her for choosing such a good subject matter. I could talk about my boy Riku here all day. Back when I did my episode on Axel, I mentioned that Axel was one of my favorite characters. But now it's time to talk about my absolute favorite Kingdom Hearts character, and honestly one of my favorite characters of all time, Riku. I am a sucker for characters who start off deeply flawed and villainous, and then end up growing, switching sides, and having to live with the guilt of once putting the heroes through a bunch of heartache. Make them a bit angsty and socially awkward as well, and you've basically written a roadmap straight to my heart. I am trash for this trope. Wolf Whistle requested specifically for me to draw Riku's Kingdom Hearts 3 design. Now, I was lucky enough to have already practiced drawing Riku's Kingdom Hearts 3 design in a piece a few months ago, so I wanted to try something a bit more action-oriented. I actually spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how to pose Riku. His legs in particular gave me quite a bit of trouble. His pose started off too feminine looking, with his legs crossed while swinging the keyblade. And while I think this pose would probably look fine on a younger Riku, he has filled out a bit more for this game, so the pose didn't feel right. Posing is always very important, but it can absolutely make or break an action scene. You've got to keep shapes clear and recognizable. So even when the characters are doing crazy stunts really quickly, you can still recognize who is doing what, and even the kinds of poses you choose to use for the characters can help identify them and say something about who they are. Which is why I have Riku in this pose, swinging his keyblade above him with an intense, serious look on his face. If you ever have the problem that I did with getting the pose just right, a great trick is to just create new layers and keep drawing new limbs until you find exactly what you're looking for. It'll help keep your drawing space organized and save you time in the long run since you don't have to erase and clean up your sketch constantly to get a good idea of what it's going to look like in the end. For any characters with complicated models like Kingdom Hearts has, I highly recommend going over your sketch to clean things up and add more details before going into the line art. Remember that once your foundation is strong, you can keep adding details, but try not to get lost in the details before you even have a foundation. You'll just create a headache for yourself. Remember to follow a line of action as well to really help push a pose, especially poses requiring a lot of movement. It makes the move feel real and give it weight. Anyone should be able to look at your drawing and tell where the body is going to be next. As always, looking for good real life reference is always helpful as well, although be sure to exaggerate the poses to make them look better on paper. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about these new Kingdom Hearts 3 designs, huh? I'm a big fan, honestly. The designs are all still unquestionably Tetsuya Nomura, but the clothing designs are a bit more realistic this time around. Riku's clothing is actually, like, practical, and I can always get down with a practical outfit. Don't get me wrong, Riku's weird buckle pants from the first game will always have a special place in my heart, but damn, this boy could wear a potato sack and I'd be happy. Anyway, I really do like the plaid look Riku and Sora are sporting. I've seen some complaints about Riku's design looking quite a bit like Noctis's, and yeah, there's quite a bit of similarity, but I really don't see that as a bad thing. Plus, Riku is still keeping true to his color palette, so it all looks good to me. I hope we see more costume changes for other characters. A while ago, I did a costume idea for Lee, and so far we don't know if we're going to see him in a new outfit, but I really hope so. It'd also be nice to see new proper outfits for Aqua, Terra, and Ventus, and a whole other slew of characters that I won't even go into right now because just thinking about them makes my heart hurt and oh my god, Numora, please tell me these children are going to be okay at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm begging you. (sighs) Shading this bad boy was a lot of fun. As always, I love adding a little symbolism with the shading when I can get away with it. So Riku is split right down the middle between light and darkness. I really do hope we get to see Riku's side of events in Kingdom Hearts 3 often, or even get him as a party member a couple of times. 
I love it when Sora and Riku work off each other, and their dynamic with each other is just so good. It'd be hard to imagine them spending the whole game apart like they do in other games. The background is just some nice splashes of Riku's colors. I like using my watercolor and splatter brush to make backgrounds like these. They're very satisfying and calming to do after spending so much time on the character itself. It's like a little garnish on the plate to help make the character pop. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this one, and thanks again to Wolf Whistle for commissioning this piece. I had a blast drawing it, and I'd love to get commissions of Kingdom Hearts characters in the future. If you watched this video and you got all the way to this point and are still unsure about what a Kingdom Hearts or Riku is, bless your heart, that's so sweet. But really, no, if you'd like to know what the hecky I'm talking about, you should go check out Sean and I's playthrough of Kingdom Hearts on his channel. It's a lot of fun. And I also have a drawing a blank on Axel. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a fantastic week, and please stay inspired.